Uh, so I'm here on a Sunday morning in the homestead. I like to start saying homestead because that's what everybody's going to be in sooner or later because as the, uh, well, at least the Americans, as the American uh, do their thing, they're going to have to do some homestead, you know. The rest of the planet does it, so you might as well join. Since I'm homesteading on the home here, uh, got my feet into the earth, you know, bare feet, bare feet, bare feet into the earth. So I'm earthing. That's what they call it, earthing, grounding, whatever they call it these days. And um, I made a smoothie earlier. What I do is, I, well, sometimes I do this. I make a smoothie and then I leave a little bit, some, you know, I make an inch on the bottom of the thing for the next day. So yesterday, whatever I put in there, you know, all the turmeric and the pepper and the, I don't know, I always put, I always put, uh, what do you call that, cinnamon and everything. Um, Oh, this special powder is a vitamin vitamin D powder that has, uh, it's with something else. And I mix that, um, and I put that with uh, this other stuff that I got, or neem. I put that with neem, and so I add that. I did that today, actually, also. Uh, I can't get enough of that, you know, that vitamin D and the neem together. I put, I, put, I put the neem in there. They don't come with neem. It's vitamin D and, and C. Vitamin D and C. And calcium, something. It's vitamin D and calcium. Your yeah, vitamin D and calcium is what it is. It's powder. So I put that in there. Uh, that's today I put that in there also. Um, but today I can remember what I had today. Pineapple, a lot of pineapple. Uh, I cut up some dates. I had some dates yesterday too in there. Um, uh, dates. Uh, I was going to do papaya, but I put too much. I put so much pineapple. I said, ah, forget it. Like that. Fig. Put fig in there. Um, Yesterday I had uh, what did I have in there? Yesterday I had apple, I had an apple in there, and, and also a pear too. Uh, today I need all that. Tomorrow I'll add whatever. I do it different every day. But if you if you figure the amount of fruit I put in, to eat that amount of fruit, it's easier to like you know, hmm, hmm, it's like that. When there's some protein powder, I got um. Let me call that uh, chaka mocha, something like that. I use half of that thing, like that. Of course, I have my pills. Then my black. I, I, when I, what I do now, as soon as I wake up, I woke up about you know before first light, maybe about four thirty somewhere around there. Um, and I usually take some uh, black seed oil, like a half a teaspoon, full of black seed oil, and put it under my tongue, and uh, I let it stay there for a while. Mixing up with that saliva, that bacteria from the night before, and I send that down to my gut. That's how I wake up. But when I'm drinking, when I'm, this is my first meal of the day, really. My, you know, it's, I don't know what time. It's about ten. Maybe it's nine thirty, somewhere around there. Now it's about ten. Ten, eleven o'clock is when I eat my fruit, eat or as as, as we say, um, eat my water, drink my fruit. Mm. White nice. Oh. Cucumber, put cucumber in there too. Well, it was half a cucumber this time. I'll start doing half a cucumber every time. Cucumbers first be very good for you. Okay. Oh, I was reading. Okay. This I'm, I'm I have been trying to read to give a, not a synopsis, but talk about this book I've been reading. Um. I so show what I mean. I, I get to a patch here. I'm gonna highlight this one and start from here. Let's see what it says. What have our people done to these colonists? We ask. That is so utterly unforgivable that this law should be passed as an unavoidable reprisal. We have not delved in their minds and are not a quarter to millions of us still laboring for them in the depths of the earth. Uh, uh, in such circumstances for the niggardly pittance? So, you say, well, that, what are you talking about? Well, it comes from this book, uh, Saul uh, Plagi, Plagi, I'm not going to pronounce his name right, uh, Native Life in South Africa. That's the, that's the cover, that's the name of the book. And it was uh, published, I believe, in 19... 19 or thereabouts 1916 1919 let me see what it says here uh 1916 
and it's really about the stuff that took place uh, in 1913 when they had that, this land act that they put into place and um they put into place now this these flies see you got the cows be leaving their dung here and then the flies got to eat the you know make their dung you know go away so that's what the flies out here so i'm out here with the flies and the earth and whatever have you but there was some um something i really i want to read this whole is this whole section i want to read to you highlighter is my friend i've read that one before to you uh i think i read that one before too let me see there's this whole section i need to read so you can get some sort of uh, i think it comes here yeah uh da, 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 da. Uh, do, 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 do. I think it starts here. Uh, oh no, here it is. Here's the whole, the whole thing. Uh, yeah, I've got to read this whole thing. Okay, it's gonna take a bit. Here we go. Uh, this is early on page fifty-six, chapter three, the Natives Land Act. Okay. Uh, personally, I must say that if anyone had told us in the beginning of 1913 that a majority of members of the Union Parliament were capable of passing a law like the Natives Land Act, those object, or whose object is to whose object is to prevent the natives from being from ever rising above the position of servants and whites, uh, servants to the whites. So, the colonizers come in. They do whatever they do. They get people to sign things on paper, whatever have you. And then, and when they do that, then they, uh, then they make the people who they did all this shenanigans to become their servants forever. Sounds like what you're saying here. Uh, uh, act prevent netters from rising above the position of servants to the whites. We would have regarded those people, uh, uh, that person, as a fit uh, subject for the lunatic asylum. But passing of the act and its operation have rudely forced the fact upon us that the Union Parliament is capable of producing any measure of uh, and, and, and any measure that is subversive and native of native interest, and that the complete arrest of native of native progress is an object aimed at in the efforts to include to Praetorian uh, uh, protectorates of the Union. So they conquer a conquer, they 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 hoodwink a land because <laughs> there's no you know, they hoodwink a land, well guns, Bibles, whatever they use, hoodwink a land, and then they make sure that you can never um, surpass them as they administer to this land. That's what it sounds like to me that's it's being said. Okay. Let me keep, let me keep going. But all these representations made no impression upon the government. Okay, so then, then of course, the people protested, you know, thousands, thousands of people outside of the thing. And they, they, first of all, they wouldn't let people in. Some people they let in, I guess, you know. But they uh, completely ignored the protests. Now, now, can you see any similarities with, with, with these days? Uh, about a few years back, there was a huge, it was, uh, worldwide, it's a huge protest against war. But yet, still, we have war. I mean, huge. This is bigger than anything. Even today, they have bigger protests than ever. They're not covered by the news, so you don't know what's happening. That's the way they do. Control, control, control. Okay. Uh, what was I? Okay. Let me see here. Okay. Then I want to read this. The government which at the beginning assured Parliament of the humane intentions proceeded to delete the mildest, the mildest clau uh, clauses of the measure and to insert some very harsh ones and very and fresh drastic harsh ones and uh, almost each time that the bill came before the House two or three fresh drastic clauses were added but it is Comforting to note that even Parliament was not entirely satisfied with this. It's heroic piece of legislation, thus uh, Mr. Mayor 
of Natal did, as only a lawyer could, with a new, with a view of recasting the bill, uh, um, some very, well, I'm reading very badly, some very useful uh, work, uh, work in, pro, in, in pointing out that the possible harm which, which the bill was to be fraught. We wish that his clever speeches and observations, um, which uh, much of which have come true, might have been shifted out of the big parliamentary reports and published in a concise little pamphlet. Okay, so there was voices, but not enough voices, uh, because again, if they control the, 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 the laws and they control the press, uh, and they've colonized your land, and then thereby with the control of the laws and the press, colonize your, your mind, your being, your future, then, you know, that's what they did. That's what you allowed them to do. And see how it's done. You put a bill that looks all right, right? Then then while you're not looking, while you're, you know, farming your land or whatever you're doing, they're adding clauses to this that makes your situation worse. Who are these? They that get there. They're not representative of you. And plus, you're not representative. This is back then. This is back in South Africa, um, uh, 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 1960, 1913, 1914, 1915, 1916. But doesn't that apply to today? I mean, what, 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 what? Isn't it the same thing? You know, uh, you vote you you vote people in office to do certain things. They don't listen to you. They do some other bidding, and they make it worse for you. Whoa, can't we see? And all this is paper plans. Tear up the paper. <laughs> tear up the. You say can't tear up a contract? Yes, tear up the paper. Contracts are made by handshakes. If you didn't shake that person's hand, it's not a valid contract. Da da. And even if that's that's the case, you can't contract uh, uh, ownership of land. Land is, you can't. Or, or ownership of water. Or ownership of whatever you think you're owning. You can't do it. It can't be done. Okay? Anyway, some farmers already viewed with an eager eye the impending opportunity at once for making slaves. So some of these people, some in their ranks, in other words, the white supremacists make the law. And then some in their ranks say, hey, let's take, take advantage of the law. So then you have a, 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 a number of people taking advantage of, a, of an unjust law. It's unjust. So why are you dealing with an unjust law? Only unjust people will take advantage of an unjust law. They're like un, the unjust of unjust. Of unjusters. They're, un, they're the unjust of unjusters. Those are the kind of people that come forth and rip you off and take advantage and prey upon people. Just a second, let me take some more, uh, eat some more of my, my water, or as we say, take my fruit. Mm. Mm. Quite tasty. Oh, I, I had some of my mango pulp and apple. Okay. We had no pass. Dutchman. We had no pass, meaning they could pass through the land. They had to have a pass. Well, let me do the stuff from the end of this paragraph. It is doubtful that if ever, if we ever thought so much as a single bicycle ride as we did on this journey, however, the sight of a policeman ahead of us disturbed these meditations, gave us to uh, thoughts of quite another kind. We had no pass. Written paper. Dutchmen, English, Jew, uh, Jews, Germans, and other foreigners may roam the free state without permission, but not natives. Native in your own land, you got to have a pass in your own land while other people who've come to your land can just freely roam your land? To us, it would mean a fine and imprisonment to be without a pass. The pass law was first instituted to check the movement of livestock over sparsely populated areas. Oh, I guess it hasn't changed. You're still livestock. In a sense, it was a wise provision in that it served to identify the livestock which one happened to be uh, uh, driving along the high, the high road to uh, prove the bona fides, bona fides of the driver and his title to the stock. Although white men still uh, steal large doves of horses in where uh, uh, Busholand, Bushuto, Bushuto land, and sell them in Natal or in East Quiquelan, uh, they, of course, are not required to carry any passes. 
These white horse thieves, to escape the clutches of the police, employ natives to go and sell the, their, the stolen livestock and write the passes for these natives, forging the names of magistrates and justices of the peace. Such native thieves, in some instances, uh, ceasing to be uh, hirelings in the criminal business, trade on their own. But it is not uh, clear what purpose it is uh, intended to serve by subjecting native per uh, pedestrians to the degrading requirement of carrying purses. They are not in charge of any stock. This is so very interesting. This is what I'm saying. That something comes into play, and then white supremacists, people with a white, that, that when a whole white supremacist system, a system of an, an unjust system, let's stop calling it white supremacists, let's call it an unjust system. They uh, they prey on the system. They they alter the rules as it goes along while people are not looking, or while you while they're diverting attention from one thing and doing something else. Kind of interesting that people let that happen. Okay, let me keep on going here. Let me say how th things also share. There were gossipy rumors about somebody having met someone who said that someone else had overheard a conversation between a boss and somebody else to the effect that the Kefirs were getting too rich on his property. This much involved, this much involved tale incidentally uh, conveys the idea that the boss, or boss is what I want to say, this uh, Dutch word for boss, was himself getting too rich on his farm. For the native provides his own seed, his own cattle, his own labor for the prowling, the weeding and the, and the reaping and after uh, um, uh, bagging his grain, he calls in the landlord to receive his share, which is 50% 50, 50 of the entire crop. What? All had gone well to the previous week when the boss came to the native uh, tenants uh, with the story that a new law had been passed under which all my oxen cows must belong to him and my family to work for two lira uh, a month. I guess that's lira, two, two something a month. A uh, failing which he gave me four days to leave the farm. A paper law that somebody else that uh, that uh, that an unjust person waves in somebody's face said, "Now you got to listen to this law." Where does this law come from? And why is this law still in effect? That's my question: Why is this law still in effect? Why are we still following these paper laws? Okay, let me. Leave. Oh, oh, here's the. Oh, wait. Here's something else. We sadly parted from these. See, these folks are they're they're traveling. Um, the, uh, Saul Plachi, he's a he's a he's a journalist, right? And he was with this bun uh, bunch of people, um, and and they were traveling, um, seeing the effect of this na new native land laws was happening on people. So they traveled through the free state, and in the, in their travels, they came across these stories. So he's telling these stories. He's a journalist, actually, um, uh, like telling these stories around. Okay, now we keep going here. We parted sadly from these unfortunate, uh, for those unfortunate old mans of an ungrateful and about inhospitable country. Uh, after advised them to trek to the Union, into the arid desert to um, Bush Bushana land. In our in our advice, we laid stress uh, special stress upon the costliness of such an expedition of theirs and upon the many and varied regulations to be complied with. On such a trek through the Western, uh, Western Transvaal, but course, whatever it may be, they, like ourselves, understood that as the law stood, they would be better off and safer beyond the boundaries of the Union. So they have to trek to change the law. The law comes to them easily by paper, but they have to go and, well, well let's keep on going. From there, we worked our way to the Hopesland district. Uh, there, we saw some natives who were Hoopslands, Hoopstand, sorry, Hoopstand uh, district. And there, we saw some natives there who were, as it were, on pins and needles. Their landlords, their landlords, having given them a few days, which to consider the the the, the advisability of either accepting the new conditions, as paying that the ridiculous fee a month, and then having all your cattle and your and your property stolen from you, right? Or leaving their house. Our advice was for these tenants to was to accept for the time being. Any terms offered 
by their landlords pending uh, to an appeal to his majesty the king. You've got to appeal to the head colonizer. Oh my goodness. We also passed through a few uh, few farms where the white farmers were visibly sympathetic towards the hired na natives, but um, some of the white farmers were accepting natives as tenants on their farms in defiance of the law. We naturally thanked these for their humanity and went on our way, promising never to disclose their magnanimity to the government official. Uh, what was suddenly what 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 has suddenly happened? One of the landlords asked. We were living so nicely with your people, and why should the laws unsettle them in this manner? Oh, well, let me answer that question. They steal all your stuff. That's unsettling, don't you think? Until you get off with it, stop what you've been doing. Well, there you go. Again, even the sympathetic um, farmers, as it were, they didn't know what's going on, but they went along with it. So they're just, they're not just as unjust, but they're unjust as the unjusters. Justers. We may have mentioned that the fortnight le uh, later, we were in General Botham's constituency in the Transvaal. A few days before we arrived, there was a meeting of white farmers that held at one of the uh, Dutch farmhouses, of which it was resolved to take the fullest advantage of the law. There you go. Which uh, had placed the entire native population in the hands of the farmers. To which uh, it was further resolved that a kefir who refused to become a servant should at once be consigned to the road. So you have a colonizer who unjustly puts a law on paper that um, people can't protest again. The people that affects the most can't protest again. And at the same time, you have people who they've, they've, now they have a strata, they have a strata class. A strata class meaning the farmers, the white farmers who they gave land to and say, now you own this land and people can farm on their land, but you, you own them and whatever, whatever they say. And, I, and a majority of them say, hey, this is a good thing. So they go along with the paper statement from the colonizer. Meanwhile, the people that's most affected have no no voice in that. What does that sound like? Don't it sound like, you know, sound like today to me. And this is over a hundred years ago. Here we go. So, I mean, so I, I, I those are the kind of things that hit me and it, and it keeps on hitting me. How did this all start? How did things start? I mean, um, if, if, radical actually means root. Mm. Let me just read. Okay. Okay, I'm going to keep on going. There's something else I want to read. Uh, I'm not going to give a. I won't give that story. But I did want to. I did want to. I started with something. I did. Hmm. Do these free staters consider their brutality less brutal because it happened to be sanctioned by law? Hmm. Wow. Good question. Presumably evidence was too bad for publication, but the report would seem to show that in South Africa, a country where prostitution was formerly unknown, colored women were uh, uh, gradually perverted and demoralized into a cesspool of impur impurities of the family lives of their national uh, of their nationalities in the subcontinent. So basically, uh, prostitution started when the colonizer uh, broke up the family and uh, did what the colonizer did. Pa pa they used the paper. Uh, paper started prostitution. There we go. Uh, there were no mothers of unwanted babies, no orphanages, because there were no stray children. The absence of extreme wealth and dire poverty prevented destitution, and the natives had little or no insanity. There had no cancer or syphilis and no venereal disease because they had no prostitutes. Have we not a right to expect better state and affairs under civilized European rule? Oh, that's the whole point, I think. They say one thing, 
and they do the opposite or they project they project something and they they actually do what they they're projecting you know say oh this is this this is this and they actually are that you are not that they're calling you they're calling you the devil when they're the devil kind of thing okay uh let me leave this one alone see i have things highlighted because i like highlighters oh this is a tragic story uh now i'm not going to go through the story now i'm gonna leave the story alone i've i've, I've Got you enough with the basic, with the basic laws there. I just wanted to read this other thing, the beginning of a chapter somewhere. I right hear says it's from the Merchant of Venice, and I mean I read Shakespeare, but I, don't, I certainly don't remember these words exactly. But here's what it says: It's the beginning of uh, uh, chap, uh, chapter nine, the Faithful Thirteen. It's called, or the Faithful Thirteen is the name of the chapter. He hath disgraced me and laughed at my losses mocked at my gains, scorned my national, thwarted my bargains, cooled my friends, heeded my enemies, and what is this reason? I am a kefir. Have not a kefir eyes, have not a kefir hands, organs, dimensions, senses, afflictions, passions, and see not filled with the same food hurt, with the same weapons, subject to the same diseases healed by the same means, warmed and cooled by the same summer and winter as the white Africana? If you pick us, do we not bleed? If you tickle us, do we not laugh? If you poison us, do we not die? If you wrong us, shall we not revenge? If we, like you, in the rest, we will resemble you in that. From the Merchant of Venice, I guess that's the Shakespeare Merchant of Venice, and I read the beginning of that thing. It's a reading this book is kind of interesting because you know uh, I can do, with direct lines with other books and other situations that say the same thing, you see. And what I've come up with, especially in hanging out, hanging out with, you know, with being an acolyte of Mr. Neely Fuller Jr., who uh, the, who is against. Our, uh, Racism, which he calls white supremacy, uh, and it's for a just world. In other words, this, this, whatever systems you have in the world right now are not working; they're unjust. And for you to make things work, you have to get rid of racism. To get rid of racism, you've got to have a just world. So there's two things you have to have that I that I've come up with. You have to have a just world, and you can't lie, because a lot of these contracts they're based on lies. They're lies. It's just based on a lie, so you can't lie. And then you, you uh, just basically means uh, if you want justice, it's a guarantee that no one is mistreated. That's Mr. Neely Fuller Jr.'s um, uh, definition, guarantee no one's mistreated. And the folks who need the help, mo the most constructive help possible, get the most constructive help possible. Uh, that, that's the system we should be under, not a system of exploitation, and not a system of, uh, of paper, of paying attention to paper. And signatures and stamps and whatever on paper, they, they mean nothing. You're a human being. You're not a paper. You're not a piece of paper. Let the paper talk to the paper. If you want to talk to a human being, you talk to a human being straight up. And then you can ask, well, wait, 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 wait. What do you mean you own this? Who says you own this? Who says you can make me pay whatever? Who says? I'll tell people, I'll tell anybody. Any, I'm, at, I'm at the age now. Here's, here's the thing about old, older people. President of some country, whatever have you, they say, I got to do that. I said, wait a second. I'm 72 years old. Junior, you don't know nothing. You don't know half of what I know. I have more bona fides on this planet than you do. So you need to chill and listen to me. I don't need to listen to you and your and your paper laws that was handed down from who? What? That kind of thing. Just a little word on a Sunday. Preaching on a Sunday. It's a Sunday sermon from me. T from the Patterson's taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect. <laughs>